Hello and welcome to Fast and Factual on First Post. We begin with the latest from the Israel-Hamas war. The war is now having serious implications in West Asia. The United States and Britain have launched air and missile strikes in Houthi-controlled areas of Yemen. American and British forces, with support from Australia, Bahrain, Canada and the Netherlands, were involved in the overnight attack. At least a dozen Houthi sites were targeted. Joe Biden said the strikes were a direct response to unprecedented Houthi attacks against international vessels in the Red Sea. Houthi leader Abdel Malik Al Houthi has threatened the United States against attacks on the group. In a televised speech, he warned that any U.S. attack on Yemen's Houthis will not go without a response. He threatened that the attack would be bigger than the recent strike on a U.S. ship in the Red Sea. Iran has seized a tanker with Iraqi crude destined for Turkey. This was in retaliation for the confiscation of the same vessel and its oil by the United States. Last year, the U.S. confiscated the vessel after finding it for carrying sanctioned Iranian oil. The White House has condemned the quote-unquote unlawful seizure. It has demanded Iran to immediately release the ship and its crew. Iran's seizure coincides with weeks of Yemen-based Houthi attacks on shipping routes in the Red Sea. South Africa has accused Israel of genocide in Gaza on the first day of hearing in the World Court. South Africa demanded, demanded the court to order an emergency suspension of Israel's military campaign in the enclave. Meanwhile, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu accused South Africa of lying. He defended the Israeli army, saying that they are fighting terrorists. Netanyahu said, and I quote, Israel is fighting murderous terrorists who carried out crimes against humanity. Injured Palestinians poured into the Al-Aqsa Hospital in Gaza's Deir al-Bala as Israel continues its ground assault and bombardment in the Palestinian enclave. Videos show medics struggling to help those injured in the attacks. Gaza hospitals have been operating with flickering electricity and water supply and inadequate medical stocks. This has raised fears of a complete collapse of health system in the region. On to other top stories now, according to the White House, the U.S. has halted its military assistance for Ukraine. However, negotiations continue in Washington over an aid package. In the two years of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Kiev has been heavily dependent on Western financial aid. In 2022 and 2023, Ukraine received more than $73 billion as aid from its Western allies. Former U.S. President Donald Trump has accused the New York judge in a civil fraud case trial of having his own agenda. Trump's legal team and the office of the New York Attorney General delivered closing arguments in the case that accuses him of inflating his net worth to dupe banks. The former president himself made a surprise statement from the defense table, reiterating that he did nothing wrong. Meanwhile, U.S. President Joe Biden's son Hunter Biden pleaded not guilty to tax charges. Junior Biden stands accused of failing to pay $1.4 million in taxes between 2016 and 2019. That is while he allegedly spent millions of dollars on drugs, escorts and exotic cars. If convicted, Hunter Biden faces up to 17 years in prison. Peru's President Dina Boluarte has said that the country's border with neighbouring Ecuador is secure. On Tuesday, Peru's government declared an emergency along its northern border. Meanwhile, Ecuador is planning to deport foreign prisoners to reduce prison populations and spending. This comes as the country grapples with a wave of violence. Violence escalated after Ecuador's most wanted gangster disappeared from his prison cell on Sunday. Finland will extend the closure of its border with Russia by four weeks until February 11. The border was otherwise set to reopen on January 15. Last year, Finland closed its border with Russia in response to a growing inflow of asylum seekers. Helsinki had then said Moscow Helsinki had then accused Moscow of orchestrating the flow of migrants. Polish President Andrzej Duda will pardon two ministers who were jailed this week. The ministers were arrested over charges of abusing their power. Duda's latest move escalates the standoff with the new administration even further. Poland has been embroiled in a political turmoil. 
ever since a new pro-European coalition came to power after the elections in October. China has reiterated that it seeks to pacify situation in the South China Sea. Beijing said that it wants to reach a peaceful solution through dialogue and consultation. China's statement came after Germany expressed concern about the South China Sea situation. The German foreign minister had highlighted the recent clashes between Chinese and Filipino vessels in the region. Sheikh Hasina has been sworn in as Bangladesh's Prime Minister. She regained the seat for a fourth straight term after securing majority in this month's elections. The elections were boycotted by Bangladesh's main opposition, which dismissed the vote as a sham. The Bangladesh Nationalist Party stayed away from the polls after Hasina refused its demand to resign. On to some climate news now, an Arctic air blush has caused heavy snowfall in Canada's Vancouver city. A weather event in which extremely cold air comes from the Arctic region is called an Arctic air blast. Authorities issued advisories for people riding and driving on the road amidst heavy snow conditions. The temperature has been predicted to go as low as minus 20 degrees Celsius with strong winds. A snow squall warning has been issued for north and central regions of the United States of United States state of Arizona. The snow squall is an intense short-lived burst of heavy snowfall. The National Weather Services requested residents to not travel until it passes. China has proposed a set of new air quality targets. These targets aim to reduce fine particulate matter concentration by 2027 and 2035. The proposal will focus more on areas like Beijing, Tianjin, Hebei and the Yangtze River Delta. China looks to put in place a system for carbon emissions controls. This comes after several cities of China grappled with intense air pollution in the last few months. Singaporean-based technology company Dyson revealed that the indoor air pollution often surpasses outdoor levels. Dyson collected data from over 2.5 million air purifiers in 40 countries as a part of its air quality data project. The major indoor pollution sources are cooking gas, wood burner heating, dust and ash. The pollution levels in most countries were highest at night and during evening. Central Africa's Congo River's record-level rise is causing extensive flooding in the DRC and the Congo Republic. The situation has led to the death of over 300 people and affected over 300,000 households in the past few months. Poor infrastructure and climate change have added to the crisis. Ocean soaked an unprecedented amount of heat in the year 2023. This is according to the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and the Chinese Institute of Atmospheric Physics. The researchers called it an equivalent to boiling 2.3 billion Olympic-sized swimming pools. The oceans absorbed up to 9 to 15 zeta joules of energy more than in 2022. One zeta joule of energy approximately equals to 10 times the energy generated across the globe yearly. This indicates the alarming impact of global warming. Climate activist group Greenpeace and residents of the Bonne Island in Netherlands have filed a lawsuit against the Dutch government. They are suing the government over insufficient measures to protect the island from rising sea levels. The legal action demands concrete steps to shield Bonne from rising waters. Now on to some business and tech news. Microsoft briefly took over Apple as the world's most valuable company yesterday. As of now, Microsoft inches just slightly below Apple in terms of market valuation. The software company market cap stands at $2.86 trillion, while the iPhone maker is worth $2.89 trillion. Microsoft's shares have risen sharply since last year. However, Apple's shares have made a weak start to the year due to growing concerns over its demand. Amazon is reportedly laying off 5% of the workforce as its audiobook and podcast division, Audible. 
The news comes a day after the company cut hundreds of jobs in its streaming and studio business. Audible CEO said that the job cuts would help strengthen its business. In 2008, Amazon bought the audiobook platform for about $300 million. Meanwhile, another report says Walt Disney's Pixar Animation Studios is all set to cut jobs. This is reportedly because the studio has completed production on some shows and it now has more staff than it needs. Another report said that as much as 20% of the company's workforce will be wiped off. Tesla will suspend production at its factory near Berlin from January 29 to February 11. This is due to disruptions in the Red Sea. The company said it lacks key components due to shifts in transport routes. Tesla is the first company to disclose an interruption to output due to this disruption. This is evidence that tensions in the Red Sea are starting to affect business and trade. Meanwhile, Tesla will reportedly raise the pay for its production workers in the United States. Many other automakers, including Volkswagen and Toyota, have also raised wages for their non-unionized U.S. workers. This comes as America's United Auto Workers Union looked to organize them after signing new labor deals with the Detroit 3. Employees in Wells Fargo's branch in Daytona, Florida have voted in favor of joining a union. This is the second Wells Fargo branch to do so. Last month, employees at the Albuquerque, New Mexico branch voted to join the union. Elections at a branch in California are expected to be held later this month. Wells Fargo is one of the first major U.S. lenders to have unionized a workforce. Investment firm BlackRock has yet again cut the value of its holding in Indian edtech firm Baiju's. BlackRock has slashed its valuation in the company by 95% to just $1 billion. In early 2022, the valuation was around $22 billion. This comes as Baiju's is embroiled in dozens of scandals back home. It is struggling to raise capital, pay its employees and pay off its billion-plus debt. Bain Capital and Hellman and Friedman are competing to acquire DocuSign. DocuSign is a provider of online signature services. It has a market value of about $12.5 billion. The two private equity firms are among the final bidders in the auction for DocuSign. It is also possible that the two firms will partner up to clinch a deal. U.S.-listed Bitcoin exchange-traded funds saw $4.6 billion worth of share trade on first day of approval. Eleven spot Bitcoin ETFs started trading yesterday. This included BlackRock's iShares Bitcoin Trust and Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. Reports say Grayscale, BlackRock and Fidel Fidelity dominated trading volumes. While still at its infancy, Bitcoin ETFs will gauge investors' appetite for the digital currency, which is often viewed as risky. Stablecoin firm Circle Internet Financial has confidentially filed for a U.S. public U.S. initial public offering. Circle did not disclose the number of shares it plans to sell. It also did not say the proposed price range for its new IPO filing. Boston-based Circle controls the issuance and governance of USDC. USDC is a cryptocurrency pegged to the US dollar. Moving to sports and let's start with cricket. India beat Afghanistan in yesterday's T20 match. Afghanistan batted first and scored 158 runs in their innings. The men in blue successfully chased down the target in the 17th over. Batter Shivam Dubey scored a half-century and won the player of the match. India now lead the three-match T20 series 1-0. Sri Lanka beat Zimbabwe by eight wickets in last night's ODI match. Rainfall reduced the match from 50 overs to 27. Zimbabwe batted first and were bowled out for just 96 runs. Spinner Vanindu Hasaranga took seven wickets to collapse Zimbabwe's batting order. Sri Lanka were able to chase down the, tar the target in 16th over. They have now won the three-match ODI series 2-0. In football, the aircraft of Gambia's national team had to make an emergency landing earlier today. There was a sudden loss of oxygen in the plane's cabin, forcing the inhaler masks to drop down. 
Upon landing, the coach and the players said that they were scared for their life but are thankful they are alive. Gambia's team was flying to Ivory Coast to take part in the Africa Cup of Nations. Barcelona beat Osasuna 2-0 in yesterday's Spanish Super Cup semi-final. The game was scoreless in the first half. In the 59th minute, Robert Lewandowski opened the, opened the scoring tally. Three minutes into second half, half injury time, Lamine Jamal scored to extend Barcelona's lead. Barcelona now face Real Madrid in an El Clasico final on the 15th of January. Manchester United forward Jadon Sancho has rejoined his former club Borussia Dortmund on loan. As per reports, United will pay a portion of Sancho's wages during his loan. The striker had left German club Dortmund to join the Red Devils on a five-year deal in 2021. However, Sancho has had, had, had a serious row with manager Eric Ten Hag and was not given a spot in the playing 11. Sancho made only three appearances this season. Tottenham Hotspur defender Eric Dyer has joined Bayern Munich on loan. Dyer will play for the German club for the remainder of the season. As per reports, Bayern have paid the Spurs over $3.5 million for the defender. Dyer, who has made six more Dyer, who had six more months left at Tottenham, made 300 appearances for the club since 2014. In badminton, the men's duo of Satvik Sairaj Rankiredi and Chirag Shetty advanced to the Malaysia Open. Rankiredi and Shetty beat their French counterparts 21-11, 21-18 in straight sets. The Indian duo will now face opponents from China in the quarter-final. Denmark's Victor Axelsen has entered the quarter-final in the men's category at the Malaysia Open. World number no. 1 Axelsen beat Hong Kong's Lee Chiu Q in a hard-fought match. Axelsen won the first set 21-17, Lee came back to win the next set 22-20 and then Axelsen dug deep to win the final set 21-17. In basketball, the Dallas Mavericks beat the New York Knicks 128-124 in yesterday's high-scoring game. Julius Randle and Jalen Brunson both scored 30 points for the Knicks. However, their efforts fell five points short of victory. The star of the match was Kyrie Irving, who scored a whopping 44 points for the Mavericks. In American football, Bill Belichick has retired as the head coach of New England Patriots after 24 years. He made the decision after the Patriots finished their year with a dismal record of four wins and 13 losses. However, the 71-year role will go down in history as one of the greatest coaches in the National Football League or the NFL. Under Belichick, the Patriots won six Super Bowls out of nine appearances. In 24 seasons, he coached some of the greatest players in the NFL including Tom Brady, Rob Gronkowski and Randy Moss. In the world of entertainment, actor Freddie Highmore announced that the series Good Doctor will end with season 7. He said playing the role of Dr. Sean Murphy was one of the most rewarding experiences of his life. Last season will start streaming from 20th of February this year. The first season of Good Doctor debuted in 2017. Hollywood star Steven Spielberg, Tom Hanks, Callum Turner and Austin Butler attended the premiere of upcoming series Masters of the Air. The series will start streaming from the 26th of January on Apple TV. The historical story revolves around the team of US Air Force's bomb group that conducts bombing raids over Nazi Germany during World War II. The trailer for the upcoming installment of The Walking Dead franchise released today. The American post-apocalyptic series The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live is set after the conclusion of the original series. The story revolves around two characters who get involved in wars between the living and the dead. The series is set to premiere in February this year. The trailer of the late singer singer Amy Winehouse's biopic was released yesterday. The video featured actor Marissa Bella as Amy Winehouse. The film is titled Back to Black. The biopic is slated to release on the 12th of April. According to reports, Warner Brothers has roped in Bollywood actors Leonardo DiCaprio, Regina Hall and Sean Penn for a film. 
The cameras will start rolling for the shoot this month. The budget for the film has been reported to be approximately over $100 million. No further details about the film have been disclosed yet. Actor Julia Roberts calls not doing nude scenes on a screen a deliberate choice. In an interview, she said, and I quote, For me, not to take off my clothes in a movie or be vulnerable in physical ways is a choice that I guess I make for myself. Roberts said that she does not criticize others for making choices that suit them. And singer Jennifer Lopez released a single and music video from her upcoming album This Is Me Now. The song titled Can't Get Enough features J.Lo as a bride with actor Derek Huff as her groom. This Is Me Now is her ninth album and first musical project in almost a decade. The album is a follow-up of her 2002 album This Is Me. Veteran musician Elton John has put up his personal items for auction. This includes items like his monogrammed silver leather boots, his grand piano and many more. The auction will begin on February 21, both online and offline. An original script of the hit TV show Friends will be auctioned today in England. The script is from the two-part finale episode of season four that aired in 1998. An admin worker found the script in the studio's bin two decades ago and kept it with him. The scripts are expected to fetch approximately $700 to $1,000. Costumes and props used on the sets of popular series Succession are up for auction. A US-based company called Heritage Auctions has listed over 236 items on their website. The list has items like jewellery, a dog costume worn by actor Nicholas Braun, a watch worn by actor Matthew McFadden and other props used on the sets for the shoots.